Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today. Brian Nato, Samantha Perry with you on a beautiful day here in Hollandale Beach. You could call it a Chamber of Commerce kind of day here in Hollandale Beach. And uh, you see that turf course is coming around and uh, the main track is fast. Hope to see you out here today. We got a big weekend here. We do. At Gulfstream Park as well. Graded stakes tomorrow with the Princess Rooney. A win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Yeah, exciting. It's, it is very exciting. Great racing across the country, and um, all eyes uh, here for the older fillies and yeah. or fillies and mares. And it, it's an exciting race. It'll be fun tomorrow with the Princess Rooney. Solid group. We get to see our gal Mary Quay Contrary back at her home track where she's six for seven. And tomorrow's a big day as well because they're going to pay out the Rainbow Six. We'll get to it. But that means today is your last chance to sweep this before everybody gets involved tomorrow. Quarter of a million dollars on the line here today in this gross jackpot guarantee. It kicks off in race number three. We've got the eight race Friday cards, a horizontals galore here, as we always like to say. And uh, first and foremost, maybe uh, early pick five in, in race number one. And everything kind of intertwines uh, with all the early stuff and the rainbow in there as well. But let's take a look at my ticket in that early pick five. $27 ticket. Not a lot of scratches today, but I, I felt like there were a couple important ones. I yeah. lost the top pick. I, my last race kind of got destroyed. The last bit. race yeah. did get busted up a little bit. We'll take a look at the opener in a second. Race number two, the top pick is the two Greek Mojo. Race number three, the three, and I scratch in to talk much, the three. Race number four is the six, a la Turca. And in race number five, that is the best bet of the day, Captain Anthony in there. It's a 27 net. $27 on the drop, Captain Anthony. So $27 here. We'll get to the opener now. We're going a mile and 70 on the Tapita. These are 12-5 claimers. These are three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. It's a clean slate, a field of seven in here, very, very early in the betting. And we're all over the place. That's kind of a good thing. Dubstep for you. Yeah. This, haven't seen him in a bit. No, we haven't. But this Perfect. horse is uh, very, very good on the tapita here mm -hmm. at Gulfstream Park. I, I like a fresh filly coming into this spot. She's the one that's had the most time between races. I haven't seen her since December. Yeah, maybe that's not the best sign with a horse like this. But I like they're bringing her back in a spot where they – I think that it's a, it's a solid spot. Six males lined up to her left. So, but that's she, okay. That's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, Mary, Mary Epler knows what she's doing. She does, yeah. And uh, we haven't seen Dubstep, and uh, Dubstep's got races that play with a group like this, that play with a group of males like this. There's mm -hmm. nobody in here that she's supposed to be scared of. Uh, that's for sure. I went to the four in here. Our, our Tico, Jen Young, drops off the claim. If we can get back to the level that he was at prior to the claim, and he was in over his head for 20 last time. Jen and Jen just missed the other day. Yeah. Right, he's, he's got a big chance in here. Yeah, he does, and I don't have him in my top four, but this is a race where I, I feel like this is one of those races where anybody that's taking a big class drop like this yeah. is significant to look at. You know, you look at the morning line here, there's seven of them entered, and they're all between three and eight to one, so it kind of shows you the depth in here. Make yeah. them tap. Laura Cesar is back here on the Tapita at Gulfstream. Yeah, and ran okay at Colonial. Ended up breaking the maiden for the sixteen thousand yep. dollar level, and it was a it was a nice maiden victory. But you know who was he really running back against? He gets back to the Tapita here. He he's run okay on it, uh, but I still I, I might I I don't know. I find him hard to trust. Yeah, I'm not going to not use him, um, but. There's others in here that, to me, are, are much more appealing, and, yeah. and he'd be an underlay of 3-1, to one to, in my estimation, let alone at 9-5. to five. Very, very early in the betting, though. Early pick four in race number two will go six furlongs on a fast main track. These are fillies and mares, which have never won two. 12-5 is the tag in here, down to 10, and uh, a clean slate of seven, and we'll take a look at Samantha's early pick four ticket. Yeah, and a lot of these, like you mentioned, Brian, they kind of overlap, but uh, we'll get to this race in just a second. Race three, the one on top for me that is light and path on the class drop. Uh, race number four, it's low-hanging fruit, but my best bet is Lily Bear. I just don't really see how she's... Uh, I don't see anybody being here. Maybe Alaturka can close on her. your top pick, but I think she's classier. And in race number five, uh, just too deep for me. I actually dropped Captain Anthony uh, at the last minute here. If you want to add him in, Brian likes that one a lot. But uh, the eight on top for me, a rock. $9 to play. 
I would have loaned you the four dollars and fifty cents. <laughs> to put them in? Okay. Yeah, if you need it. I'll, I'll take it for you after that. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll get back to the opening leg here, and you can see Samantha is growing three deep. They're the exact same three horses I have as well. And, and honestly, I think they're the three horses you need to use. I yeah. wouldn't really feel comfortable narrowing it down that much. Made for summer for you, Mike Yates, and we've got a stat you can we talk do. about too, right? Yeah, and I thought this was – quite flattering for him this is a barn that he's just so good on these class drops but uh tapita to dirt just three for 19 16 percent this is just within the last two years at Goldstream park i love the fact that this horse is getting back to her surface mm -hmm. which she broke her maiden and did so quite impressively yeah and and Tapita, regardless, she doesn't want to go two turns. That, exactly. That is, that is for sure. So not only do you now get back to the main track, you get back to a sprint, too. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, she's ultimately going to show her best. So she's certainly a big player in here. We just got the exact reverse. Yeah. I went I went Greek mojo. Paul Valerie does not start a lot of horses, but he's a high percentage trainer. And just the, the drop here has got to play. And you look at the, the one time or the second time this horse has been on dirt, excuse me, but one of them is a win. So, exactly. you know, it doesn't bother me at all. No, and of course those were with different connections, right. but still I think that this is a filly that if she can run – just anything like that, it puts her in the mix. Yeah, without a doubt, especially against a group like this. And then rounding it out, Wildcat, Lunita, Louis Duco. She blasted him in the slop. We, we'd like to think we're going to be we're going to be fine at uh, 120 in the p.m. We know how summer in South Florida works. Uh, but she also comes in off a win, and I say this a lot. That's that's kind of a big deal in a race like this. It is, and she took the lead that race, and just no one even pressed or tried to run with her. It was a smart move by Sunny Leona, who rode her. Hector Diaz gets aboard now. I think that this is a filly that uh, she could certainly just come back and, and pair it up again. She, she's meeting six others in here, and made for summer, or excuse me, uh, Extra Indy was a well-beaten second last time. The other five that she meets in here got absolutely walloped last time yeah they're a bit questionable and she ran off the screen so i mean she's got that going for her don't sleep on her even though she does face winners yeah. for the first time today all right two down six to go when we come back that rainbow's at a quarter of a million dollars we'll take a look at my ticket when we do so stay tuned My racehorse has opened up a door for people that felt like that door would have never been opened for them. We can all be owners and we can all get that excitement. You can meet your horse through the different experiences and all of the events that My Racehorse puts together. You get that hands-on connection. Whether you have $50 or $500, everyone that joins My Racehorse gets that experience of a lifetime. I love My Racehorse. Let's go. And welcome back to Gulfstream today, Brian and Samantha with you. And as I mentioned, beautiful day here Friday as we kick off a big weekend. It's Princess Rooney weekend. We'll talk about it a little bit later in the lightning round and throughout the day. But the win and you're in tomorrow for the Breeders' Cup for the Phillies and Mares grade three race. So very, very exciting. But mandatory tomorrow in the rainbow. And that's yeah. going to be a big one. But quarter of a million dollars before we get there on the line today in race number three. Let's take a look at my ticket. It's a 2880. I lost my top pick here demurely. So I'm scratching into a horse in race number four. It's the six Ala Turka, But certainly Lily Bear is going to be very, very tough in race number five. That's my best bet of the day. Captain Anthony. Race number six, we're down inside. I'm going to try to upset General Ledger, who we met yesterday. That was kind of cool, yeah. right? But Sozy was good for Joe Orsino. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they bet him like a good thing in his debut at Monmouth, and he ran to it as well. So I'm going to use them both in there. That's an exciting optional claimer for the up-and-coming two-year-olds. Four deep in race seven with the three. Mamba on three. Our old friend coming back here for Carlos David, who's white hot to start this sunshine meet out and then in the finale that is samantha kind of hinted at got beaten up a little bit by the scratches time is magic was my long shot i do, don't think he would have been close to 12 to 1 anyway 
and that's long out the window yeah. now. So I don't even know if he's going to be an average shot in there, but that <laughs> is my, my top pick. And I was excited to see you sent over a video of him working in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sales work, yeah. So maybe you'll, you'll, you'll tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. You are. Okay. All right. Well, we, we'll, <laughs> we'll build to that, I guess. Uh, race number three, we're five and a half here on the Tapita. These are uh, three-year-old fillies. They're fillies and mares four and up, which I've never won three races. We're in for eight today. And you go to the inside, light and path. Edgar Zaya is teaming with Antonio. Yeah, this is a big drop for this horse mm -hmm. here. And he hasn't, she, pardon me, has not disgraced herself at all in the company that she's been keeping as of late. But... She is what she is. And Antonio Sano, he likes to win races. This is a cozy spot for her here, and she's never been. This is really the bottom of the barrel for her. Second off, a little bit of a freshening, and you're right. You look at her three starts against winners, and they've just been better than yeah. this group. Uh, she didn't run poorly at all last time. Nope. She's just not going to win for 20, so here she is for eight, and I think it makes perfect sense uh, as well. I'm on the three talk much for Georgina Baxter, who's, of course, going to saddle our Adios jersey tomorrow yeah. and the Princess Rooney. Um, rising in class, I get it. I thought that was a pretty good effort last time, though. It was. I almost think, though, it was a little bit of a, a life and death to win. Mm -hmm. It was a gutsy performance, to say the least. And I don't think you and I were on her no, that I day. Wasn't. Yeah, they, they bet her, too, like she wasn't going to lose, and she, she didn't. I just wonder maybe that comes back to her a bit. Yeah, it's possible. She's facing better today. And yeah. again, I scratch into her. She's the controlling speed. She the is. question is, girl, by on the outside, the seven. How much pressure does she put on her? Uh, blazingly, another one coming out of a 2L win for Victor Barboza. And I think you probably have to use her, too. Yeah, I think you and I both agree that the figures sometimes can be a bit hard to trust on yeah. the tapita. So she, if you're looking at that, she looks like a clear winner. Nobody's even come close to no. a 70 speed buyer figure uh, except talk much but still the second place finisher came back to win amori yeah. control uh but it, that wasn't a huge figure that came back for amori control but point is i think with both you and i's selections maybe don't read too much into that buyer 100 percent uh she does have upside and we'll see that horse that she beat tomorrow i think or sunday yeah. and she when samantha says she came back to win she came back and ran off the screen she actually did. so maybe it was a pretty solid race it could we'll, be, yeah. yeah it could be we'll see what we get uh late pick five time in race number four we're going to go five and a half again on the tapita phillies and mares three-year-olds and up it's an optional claimer a field of seven and we'll see what the ticket is are you singling lily bear to start I it am, off okay. yeah but just ripping off the band-aid yep. early it's a 24 dollars play we'll get to that race in just a second race five uh, the the eight a rock on top for me if you want to add in the nine you can captain anthony that's brian's best bet race six uh, i'm in agreement the one sozi is a big good looking colt excited to see him here today race number seven the five on top rock and roller for me this is one that uh, just faced a little too tough last time going two turns back to sprinting in the finale i had four horses and three of them scratch including my top pick so i do scratch into the seven iron shield but don't completely trust the race using a couple others. Uh, I'm fading the six time is magic. I hope that's a, a good move on my end, but we'll see $24 to play. All right. We'll start it here with uh, six to five favorite. And Lily Bear is clearly, clearly the horse to beat. You yeah. just look at her form for Safi and, and Lionel and she just doesn't miss a dance. Nope, she doesn't. She's just run her eyeballs mm -hmm. out in every single start. Uh, you look at David's Rose, who defeated her last time, and they just have kind of taken turns uh, beating each other, turning the tables on each other. She ran a great race uh, regardless. David's Rose was just not losing, and uh, Safi's got this Philly in raging form right now. I think she's going to be tough here. He does. You know what bothers me, and it's one of the reasons why I didn't pick her? Go David's for it. Rose stunk last week in the stakes. Yeah. At eight to five. That's I picked true. her. Now she was crazy bet at eight to five. Right. She didn't run. Yeah. And I don't know. Now Lily Bear, you know, you say this a lot. Does it come back to her? She's That's been true. neck and neck the last two starts. Throw a half length in there four starts ago. You know, to her credit, she just runs every time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just said, you know what? I'm going to take a little bit of a shot. Alaturka. She wins every time. I, you know, I know she's going for the hat trick here, but she's won two in a row, and every question they've asked, she's answered. And she, she's going to be a much better price. That's true. But 
and I do like her closing style that she's going to have here, but, oh, gosh, for me, Brian, I just think that she's just outclassed. Oh, she's got to class up. There's there's no doubt yeah. about it. And um, she's 7-2, to two, and that, that would be an underlay to me yeah. because she's looking way up at Lily Bear. I, yeah. I, I'm not going to fight you on that. I just thought maybe if Lily Bear comes back a little bit That's and fair. Alaturk is still going up, maybe they meet in the middle, uh, and, and then, you know, you take the price and we'll see what we get there. But, yeah. you know, I... Listen, Lily Bear's six to five for a reason, and she's going to be yes. every bit of that. You know, Barbara's in here, too, by the I, way. I saw her, yeah. Oh, well, Barbara. <laughs> we like Barbara. Yeah. Late pick four time in race number five. We'll go a buck seventy on the Tabita. These are three year olds and up, which have never won two races. The tag is 35. A good group of 10 here. Yeah. Uh, and here it is. It's a run back, but uh, my best bet of the day. I I'll tell you what, I, I get some additional value. This is a wide, wide open race. I. I, I Kind of, sort of, at least. And, mm -hmm. and Captain Anthony, 9-2. to two. You single a horse in here, you get a lot of value. This is, might be a, a very spready kind of race for people. So let's talk about it now. You see the $12 ticket there. Um, I'm going to show replays today. We promise you. And, and here's three of them. Or yeah. here's coming out of we got Racket, we've got Truth and Honesty, and we got Classic Motown. Yes. I think that Racket ran a massive race here. Uh, he was the only one to stick around in this whole whole uh, race. Now, classic Motown, you see him, he's the three horse just kind of hanging a bit. Uh, I don't trust him too much. The one was trapped up on the rail there. I just, I wanted to show that because Racket really outran his odds there and with a big number. He was going back to the two turns after trying the dirt last time. Uh, he didn't disgrace himself at all, and I just think he deserves a, a little bit of respect in this spot. You know, uh, it's tough to disagree on that, and he ran hard. I don't want to beat up a horse that was, you know, ran well in there and right. was beaten just ahead. But the other side of the coin now is uh, old Rackets one for 20 with nine underneath finishes. That's fair. Yeah. Kind of sort of feel like that's, you know, that's him. He's got races in him that would beat this group. Uh, and, and Leon McCanson does a good job on the Tapita, and we, we like the work he does. And uh, I don't know if they might bet this horse a little today. It's kind of like the wedding and the funeral. You had it there at 14 to 1. You're coming back today at. That's true at an underlaid price. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like Captain Anthony. I mean, you look at the races Captain Anthony's coming out of, um, Lord Eddard Stark. So and strong. So strong and the best distance. And you, you see those groups. And now the, the, this group today that Captain Anthony's facing, um, to me, he should be favored and in, in, he should be favored in this race. I have in my notes about six races back that mm -hmm. he tries hard but needs class relief. Yeah. So I've just been waiting, waiting, waiting for them to drop him, and here they do, and he does try hard. Yeah, he does. I just wonder if now he's been defeated so many times that maybe he's going to get a little bit of that defeatist attitude. It's and that's possible. why I, that, That's why I tossed him mm -hmm. uh, in the last minute. And you can certainly add him in. I'm not saying that he can't win. I, I respect the barn, and he's, he's a cool horse. He runs with his head really high and he's just not just kind of an awkward type of a mover, but he does try hard. Uh, but now you lose Edwin Gonzalez as well. I just. Yeah. Classic. Mo I know. I get it. I, I get it. I just feel like the, the sometimes in spots like these, the class relief that it, it pl plays out a little yeah. bit. Classic Motown's favorite on the line. He, he'll go favorite in here. I, I get it. Yeah. But he, he, we just saw it. Exactly. He's I think that Racket ran no a way stage. better race than yeah. Classic Motown, and they're going to bet him just through the connections. And, yeah, he can win. It won't shock me, but meh. Well, you got Eric. We haven't yep. gotten to your pick yet. You've got Eric. Yeah. We will draw a line through the turf race. Certainly makes sense in here. Oh, huge. The the maiden win here was very strong. They tried this horse on the grass at Kentucky Downs. Yeah. I will say, sometimes Kentucky Downs can, can jar up a horse. Uh and I don't know what we'll get back on him. Now, the good thing is I feel like the Tapita is just, this is a good spot to bring him back to because right. I feel like it's a little bit easier. It, it doesn't, you're going from, you know, running on concrete, ups, downs, and then you're getting to the nice, consistent surface of the Tapita here. So I feel like if this horse was coming back on the grass at another track, I would fade him. But since yeah. he's back here in a spot like this, I think it says he's come back in good order, and we'll see what we get. Yeah, this 
D'Angelo guy. He's okay, too. So. Yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, I heard he's all right. White hot to start the meet. Yeah. He got this, this horse pick $36 two starts ago. We it were all sitting in, here with our we are confused. Yep. jaws on the floor on that <laughs> one. And we've got Miguel as well. So he's a, he's a player in here. A lot of upside, too, with Iraq. If, 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 like she said, he comes back yep. from Big Kentucky ifs. down. None's the worst for wear. Good sixth race today. Oh, yeah. Two-year-old time of year here at Gulfstream Park. And, and you're going to see him on display here. We're going to get optional claimer going five and a half on the main for these two-year-olds. We've got two replays to show you. We're both on the top pick, but let's go with General Ledger first, yeah, guys, because that. this is a horse obviously is going to be a strong favorite in here. We got to see him at the barn yesterday. He's a cool looking dude. Yeah. And he ran darn well on debut, he, like the money said he was. Yeah. And look at this. He was three deep mm -hmm. here. Uh, this is a tough spot to win from, and he was able to put them away now he just kind of classed up and when i first w was looking at this race without watching the replays and maybe you did the same i was thinking oh man they're not going to beat this horse but he was really all out yeah. to win this race here and that's all he's done is just this win now he can improve off of it i think he's got a small margin for error here though and you can see i mean he's just kind of uh, wandering a little bit down the stretch. When you watch the gallop out of this guy, though, Brian, he looks pretty gassed. Yeah, and, and the other thing, too, is visually very, very impressive to be three deep, pressing, dueling. Yes. But then you look at the splits, and they went 46 and four. You, right. Eh, you can't really run much slower than that yeah. when you're sprinting like that. So we'll see. He's facing winners today. And, again, we're talking about the same thing I was talking about with Lily Bear. Uh, he's going to be a short number today. So you have alternatives. One of them is with uh, Sozi down on the inside for Joe Orsino. And the word was out on this horse on debut at yeah. Mammo. And, boy, he ran to it, huh? And let's pull up the replay. And you have in your mind, and we saw General Ledger uh, yep. at the barn yesterday with Safi. Look at the physical specimen that is Sozi. This is uh, just outlooks any of these horses that we've seen here. He's just a big class dude and uh, the rail's not always the spot you want to be at Mammoth and he was uh, he got over and was great I mean just look at him compared to the field he's running behind he just looks like a, a bigger better batter version of the rest of that field now I highly doubt that five and a half furlongs is the spot that they wanted for him but you have to take what you can get here. And against this field, this is a good spot. Yeah, and if you're not in the loop, the, the mile at Monmouth is two turns. So he's going to bring a lot of foundation exactly. here. He's got to run against winners. And I say the mile at Monmouth because he ran in the, in the sapling. And I'll use that term loosely because he didn't do a lot of running. No. But he got pressed early. You can see the race. Exactly, yeah. Eh. And we'll see Noted comes back, I believe, tomorrow at yep, Keeneland. At uh, Keeneland for Todd. Frankie's Empire, the third place finisher, won at Parks. So, you know, read into that what yeah. you will but still i think he's he's one that yeah this is this is a horse to bet today yeah noted is in the uh the grade one breeders futurity that's right yeah. at monmouth tomorrow keeneland at keeneland tomorrow <laughs> excuse me so maybe you know you put just put that in your handicapping bag if, if right. Jose runs well in here for dj stables uh big effect is is third in our picks i, I don't i don't i don't see him being a win threat, do you? I, yeah, I I, yeah, and it's interesting because Edgar Zayas uh, goes to big effect after winning on General Ledger, but they could have already given the call yeah. to Eddie Pleases, so it, it makes sense that things happen like that. Uh, blinkers go on. Yeah. I don't know. Eddie's a good horseman, so if you, you see an equipment change like that. I, pay attention, I, yeah. I think you, you do pay attention maybe a little, little bit more than someone just kind of throwing something at the right. wall. But uh, I think he's got to step up. He does have an experience edge, and that there's he something does. to be said for that at this time of the year. Late double time in race number seven. We'll go five and a half in the Tapita. This is the feature today, although the six is so good as well. It's yeah. an optional claimer Coco here. Feature. Yeah, Coco feature. There we go. Coco feature. Coco. See Coco tomorrow as well. Uh, three and up here, and we'll take a look because we've got Klugman and Uncle B in here. They are the six and the seven today. We'll take a look at them last time when they went at it and uh, Klugman got the better of Uncle B. Yes, he did. And Uncle B ran really hard, but I don't know what Uncle B was doing on the lead yeah. like this. I was very shocked. He broke from the the far outside, so I understand, you know, get him out and get him in a good position. I don't think this is where they wanted him, though. And this is not where he does his best running from. Right. 
at and, all. And I remember this race now because Figueredi was my long shot, yeah. and I expected him. He was my long shot because I thought he could get loose, and Uncle B was not supposed to be pressing nope. 44 and 3. It was so fast. And, and so, of course, he paid the price there. Absolutely. But he, you know, this is the old wins the battle, loses the war. I mean, that is the dictionary version of it mm -hmm. right there. I would fight anyone and, and tell them, listen, I thought he ran a better race than Klugman. Definitely. Klugman picked up the pieces to his credit, but we're both going against them today. Yeah. And that's in large part because of, the, you know, the kind of race they ran. The unfortunate thing is Toto Fino is out of this race. Uh, they were going to bet rock and roll or anyway he of was course. not going to be close to eight to one and now with toto fino out on the cutback you're you're all sorts of values gone it is yep and uh i think that uh, rock and roller uh, you know, tried the bears den last out yeah, he wants Just nothing to do with no 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 two turns for him uh they tried it hey at least they tried it it was a pretty ambitious spot but the way he won against optional claimers last time and against older uh, two starts back. That was just a, a solid move. And I, I get it. Just just try him out in it. Yeah. He, he just, that's that's not his thing. And now he comes back here in a, a spot that he likes. And I think he'll get some speed to run at as well. Wow. All of my picks, you can see him there. And, and yours, actually, now that I look at it too, are all very pace dependent. Yes. Because it's, Toto Fino's out. That's a little bit of a problem for Samantha and I. Yeah. Still, the pace in here looks absolutely hellacious. Capture the Lion was He's so good quick. last time. He's crazy fast. Mm -hmm. Uncle B's to his outside. And we didn't think Uncle B would on the lead last time, but he's not letting anyone get away no. either. Okay, he'll so be there. He'll be there. Um, Toto Fino coming out hurts the pace a little bit, but Mamba at three has run very, very well here in the past. He's got a couple wins, and Carlos David, he's up at Saratoga. He's up at Monmouth yeah. on the turf. Carlos, white hot to start the uh, meet. Oh, yeah, they had a... Second time starter yesterday went at Belmont and Aqueduct. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a barn that's come back on uh, fire. Now, I worried. I think he had a horse last week that came from Saratoga Turf Course, and I was kind of worried about yeah. that. Uh, it was no problem. And, again, like I mentioned about the Tapita earlier, it's just a very nice, even running surface right. for these horses. He's going to have to get some pace, like you said. He's going to have to get some pace. They're going to have to hit hard up front, and he's going to have to work out a trip. But, uh, you know, I think he's in a good spot, and yeah. we just got our exacta reverse. Finale here. Finale got hurt by the scratch, Did, as you yeah. said. We're going to see. Okay, the, it, we're going to mile and 70 on the Tapita. Maiden special weight here for Phillies, two years old. The two great Venezuela is out. We'll see her tomorrow, or maybe it's Sunday. I'm getting my days mixed up. Majest a lot of Venezuela is in over the weekend. <laughs> well, uh, Pete's probably not complaining upstairs because great Venezuela and majestic Venezuela is out. I mean, he would have crushed it anyway, but yeah. there's a tongue twister he doesn't have to deal <laughs> with. And uh, Shinka, the nine, is out too. Started with you with Iron Shield. Iron Shield stretching out. Uh, he's been... Uh, she has been hanging a bit, going the just the five, five and a half furlong sprints. When horses hang like this, I want to see them go two turns. Yep. And again, Jose D'Angelo, I, I don't know what the price was to begin with, nine to two. Nine to two. Uh, this horse could go off favored here. Yeah, I mean, the three scratches hurt. I was on a long shot who I, I thought would be half her price. Time is magic. Uh, listen, I it, there's not a lot going on here. One of the foals won on debut. We can show the, yeah, let's the, show the, the morning. It was, to me, as much her as it is the rest of them that were in here. I agree. And this filly, she breezed 10 and 1. She, to me, just kind of looks like she runs in place. Now, this was 81 degrees. Uh, still, I just, uh, w with the scratches, she's got way more of a chance now, I think. But I would have talked you off of her by the end of the day, I think. With she's a not this time who that kind of stands out in this race a little bit. Yeah, they um, paid. I think it was more. <laughs> I'm more of a pedigree buy with sure. her. The second and third dams were pretty nice. So yeah, I just, they paid two ten for her this, yeah. th earlier this year. That's good. You know what I also like too, and, and we don't want to get on her too much, but uh, the, the Kelly Kelly Breen, good to see Kelly back here. Reaches for a, a Jersey guy and Sammy Camacho, who is that's great. Yep, came take, back firing. Came back firing to be sure, and and great Venezuela who's out. And I'm going to try to talk people off her later this weekend too, because I. I I, I didn't like that race. Okay. I had the winner that day. That's a race. That was a $25,000 maiden claimer. That was a race where, you know, I don't trust the figure. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, you can't trust At the figure all. there. Yeah, no. No, that was a long shot winner for me. And so the race was good to me, but that's the type of race where I wanted to fade a little bit. Yep. Uh, 
coming back, and she had she did not want to go by nope. in deep stretch either. So we'll talk about her later. But lightning round, it's a good one too, uh, because there's a lot going on here yeah. this weekend uh, as well as we always do. We'll start with the standings here, and uh, you know we talked about this uh, a lot during the Royal Palm meet. How how Edgar Zayas wasn't here; he got hurt a little bit, and he was bopping around. Well, Edgar Zayas has been here. And he has thrown the gauntlet down. He is. And he's just so consistent, yeah. too. And I get it. He does ride a lot of very strong, favorited horses and running for first call for people like Safi. But even these other barns he picks up for, he just does a very good job. Yeah, he's tremendous. And you know what? I mentioned it last week. Boy, he's starting to get in other barns, too. Jose D'Angelo riding yes. him a lot. And yep. that's... That's, that's a, big. That's a problem for everybody else. And speaking of which, Jose D'Angelo um, just keeps on keeping on. What a victor. That's a good number for him. But Jose has really set the bar very high now. Yep, he has. And we've, we're seeing a lot of these uh, trainers come back. Look at Ron Spatz there. We talked to him yesterday morning. We'll be posting those videos. So just We get closer to championship meet. But good to see these uh, other trainers like Ron Spatz with not a ton of horses. They got our long shot home on the, yeah. the Sunday finale. How about that? So it's exciting. Good to see Ronnie up there. One of the good guys. Yep. And like you said, we spent some good time with him yesterday. Fun, funny guy. And uh, one of the good guys that we root for around here. Tomorrow, we've already talked about it, and you're going to hear a lot about it, but it's Princess Rooney Day here tomorrow. The grade three, the win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. And here's Mary doing her thing in deep stretch, winning the grade two inside information. Yep. She, like you said, was six for seven here at Gulfstream Park. She loves it here. There's going to be no question that she'll be running on late. Hopefully, those races in Saratoga didn't... Uh, yeah come back to her you look at her last work here at Goldstream Park it was a quick one so it's she seems all right mm -hmm. but you never know and time passage is going to lead the way literally lead the way in the Miss Gracie on the undercard well I'll tell you what you know she might not lead the way because I don't know she if you, I'm sure you saw this Arendelle's got the one horse in there that they might be saying, you know what, Time Passage, you're not going to get away from our gal Kirk Coco and get loose on a lead. Yeah, she was. Well, gamesmanship. Uh, yep, it, it'll be a fun race to watch. I think Time Passage ran huge here. It was against older as well. Now she's in with three-year-olds. Uh, excited to see uh, Eddie Plisa. He's loaded this weekend. Yeah, look at her doing it in style there. To thyself be true. It was a distant third. Is it's back tomorrow too, yeah. as well. Your best bet today? Uh, Lily Bear. Low-hanging low fruit, but... Uh, I think she's a deserving winner here. And I am on Captain Anthony in race five, who'll be a little bit uh, much better price than Lily Bear. Your long shot? I lost today. I you lost, lost it? Yeah. yeah. I kind of lost mine, too. Technically, it's time and magic, but yeah. uh, that's long gone, unfortunately, with the scratches. And last, but absolutely very not least, tomorrow. Now, we got a quarter of a million in the rainbow today. Tomorrow, we will pay that out. Yep. They're putting 1.2. I always bet over. You know, if it doesn't get hit today, we're in the 300 range, and five to six times puts it up there at uh, one five or so. Yep, and it's a good sequence. It's yep. got our Miss Gracie. It's got the, the grade three Princess Rooney. And I think uh, you can have some leverage if you've got some good opinions in, in both of those races. So uh, make sure to start studying, get involved. We'll post videos out, of course, for uh, the, the Rainbow Six. We'll post them a little bit later today. Maybe get a long shot for yep. you to include in your sequence. And uh, it'll be fun. Can't wait for that. Big weekend here. Big day as well. Pete's upstairs with your scratches and changes, and we'll see you back here for the opener.